This is a demonstration of the features that have been added to the Satellite Explorer Pro app in version 1.1. The first thing we'll do is start the app by clicking on the icon. And here we see the what should be familiar to you screen. The additional functions in version 1.1 are initiated by clicking on the LOS text box, which is now in boldface. And as you remember from the other video, the boxes that have their contents displayed in boldface, when you tap on those, they initiate new actions. Uh, this, these functions are driven off of our favorites group. And we can see here that there are, we have currently three satellites in our favorites group. So we'll click on the uh, AOS or the LOS text box, and what we see are the predictions for the upcoming orbits for the satellites in our favorites group, and it'll calculate these out to for approximately 24 hours in advance. They are sorted in ascending AOS order. Uh, each entry shows the name of the satellite, the AOS time, the LOS time, and the maximum elevation during that pass. Uh, you'll notice the times are shown in local right now. With this little segmented control over here, you can switch that over to UTC. Uh, this is actually fairly handy to plan out your, you know, which passes you're interested in for the next day. The notifications are initiated using these two controls up here. Now, you're probably familiar with notifications already, as many of the apps on the iDevices uh, generate them. For example, uh, most email programs, news services, things of that sort. Uh, this program generates the same type of uh, notifications. Uh, the notification generated by this program will look like this. Um, you might notice that the iOS device is currently uh, in the sleep state, but as you probably have noticed, the notifications will appear even if your device is uh, in sleep. Uh, the notification shows the name of the program, the name of the satellite, the AOS time with a little L to show that it's, it's local, and the max elevation during that pass. Uh, you, this, I made this screen capture just after the notification appeared. Uh, you may have noticed that the AOS time is 10.23 and the actual current time is 1013. The notification will be uh, initiated before AOS. This is to allow you time if you need to point your antenna or get your station ready or anything of that sort. Now the notifications are created by this program and they're referred to as local notifications. They're created by this program and they are sent automatically to a service that's running on your iOS device all the time when power is applied. And that's the notification center. Uh, the notification center is actually responsible for everything else from, from that point on. Um, as a result, you have to have the settings in the notification center uh, set. Now these vary as Apple comes out with new versions of iOS. Currently the notification in, in the notification center section for this program look like this. Again this is all created by Apple so as they change iOS this may look a little different. You want to make sure that the notif notification center is turned on, meaning uh, it will receive the local notifications created by this app. 
uh, the alert style I would recommend uh, this one alerts there's a couple other switches down here uh, I would you know particularly to start out just have all of those on uh, after you have that set and normally you only have to do that once so it's not a not a big deal uh, we can look at setting or creating notifications. Now remember these passes, these are the AOS times. We can control how far ahead uh, the alerts or notifications will be sent. So I'll show you how we can do that. We leave the program, go over to settings, and find the settings for this app. And we can see that there are three things that we can set. One is the pre-AOS alert time. It defaults to 10 minutes. Um, you can change it here to other uh, times if you wish. Uh, the program itself now makes little beeps and this has nothing to do with notifications, just, just a feature added in version 1.1. Uh, satellite that you're currently looking at in the main window, a beep will be generated this amount of time before AOS and another beep will be generated when AOS occurs. Uh, if you want to turn these on, use this little switch or you can turn them off. Uh, there's also an option to create a test notification and we'll talk about that when I show you how to actually create the test notification. So when we have these set the way we want, we can leave the settings and go back and go back into our program. Now the passes that you see here are um, limited to a maximum of the first 15 entries in your favorites list. I don't know why anybody would have that many favorites, but if you do, uh, it'll only use the first 15. Uh, also, these uh, iOS devices are nowhere near as fast uh, as the laptop or desktop you may be familiar with. Uh, this is a um, iPhone simulator running on a MacBook Pro and just a rough measurement shows this laptop which is nothing special to be about a hundred times at least a hundred times faster than uh, the iPhone so uh, there may be little delays in here as it tries to load the or calculate all of this stuff you can see there's quite a few notifications here and there is a lot of calculations involved. So to begin adding notifications we can click on the start. Now this start means to start entering applications or excuse me passes. So we'll just pick a couple here. All you have to do is tap on them. Uh, you'll notice when you tap on them the satellite name turns to orange to help you keep track of which ones you have uh, selected. When we click the stop button we can see that four notifications are cur currently scheduled. Click on the OK button to clear that. We can then, just to show you something else here, uh, we'll go back to the main screen and you'll notice that the program icon now has a little circle by it which is referred referred to as a badge number and the badge number can be used by applications to display anything. Um, email programs quite often will display you know how many emails you have or things of that sort. In this app um, a one here indicates that 
uh, some notifications have been scheduled. Uh, if you do not see that, it means no notifications have been scheduled. So we'll go back here and this button will clear all the existing notifications that have been generated by this app. When you press the start button, that will also clear them. It gets rid of the old ones. It, it gets way too confusing if you don't and you'll run into some problems if, uh, if you're not careful. So to eliminate those problems, this will clear them when you, when you press the start button. So the clear button will clear the notifications. If we go back here, we can see the little circle uh, has disappeared. Now the thing that we haven't, the only thing we haven't talked about yet is the test notifications. So if we go back to the settings for the app and we click on the create test notification switch, what will happen is when we create notifications using the procedure that I just showed you, uh, if this function or this switch is on, an additional notification will be generated. And that gener uh, notification will be generated one minute after the current time. So when you create the notifications, <coughs> it will automatically add another one in there that will be generated one minute uh, beyond the current time. Uh, this is invaluable. Uh, if you don't have this, it, it's very, very frustrating trying to get your notification center settings correct. Uh, you don't want to have to wait around for a uh, satellite to come into view to see if your notification center settings are correct. So if this is on, um, the program, the app works as normal. It's the only thing that's changed is this additional notification will be created when you create the notifications. So we'll go back here and particularly when you're getting started, probably the easiest way to do it is to just you know, enable the test notifications, then click on the start button, which enables you to add notifications, which once again, you can do by tapping on these. If you just tap on the stop button now, the only thing that will happen is the test notification will be generated. So you notice here it says one local notification has is currently set. Um, this is really handy for testing. All you have to do is, you know, go back and wait a minute and uh, the notification will show up. Again, clearing clears them. Start. Uh, since we have the local uh, notif test notification on, if we go back and say pick this one and then click the stop button, you notice it says two local notifications scheduled. The one that we selected and the test notification. This may sound a little complicated. It, it, it's a little bit more complicated than playing Angry Birds or whatever else you do with your iOS device. But um, once you do it a, a time or two, it's really not all that bad. So this is uh, all of the features that have been added in version 1.1 of this app. Uh, remember to take a look at the video that covers the basic operation if you have not seen it. I uh, hope this app fits your needs and you like it. If not, there's a lot of other apps out there and I'm sure you'll be able to find one. Uh, 73's and have a nice day.